I'm going to break you, break the news to you right now. God does not send anybody to heal you. He doesn't. He does not send anybody to heal you. He may send somebody to assist to heal you. He may send somebody to help you along the way or push you towards healing, but it's never go there's never going to be a requirement where another human being heals you like themselves. Because what's the point of God being God if God is sending somebody else to do his job? <laughs>
frustrated about is that um, she mentioned in her interview that she she felt good from helping him heal. Now, this is where I'm going to this is where I'm going to relate it back to real life. There's this there's this meme. If I can find it, I'm going to, you know, post it. I'm going to, you know, put it up. And it says, um, y'all be trying to break the people God sent to heal you. First of all, if you are a Christian, I'm not talking to anybody who's not a Christian. If you I'm going to break you, break the news to you right now. God does not send anybody to heal you. He doesn't. He does not send anybody to heal you. He may send somebody to assist to heal you. He may send somebody to help you along the way or push you towards healing, but it's never going there's never going to be a requirement where another human being heals you like themselves. Because what's the point of God being God if God is sending somebody else to do his job? So I just hate that when people are going through something, they look for to the next human being for healing. And I think that's a dangerous thing because when you do that, you replace God in your life. And now if I'm wrong, correct me. Because like I mentioned in my last Soulful Sunday, I am on a journey and I'm, you know, I'm still a baby and I'm learning. But I ain't never heard nothing in the Bible about God sending somebody to heal you. Besides Jesus, <laughs> besides Jesus himself. When she said that it felt good healing somebody else and healing myself, you can't give nobody nothing that you don't have yourself. So... I'm not that's another thing about relationships and in dating is that people will like try to do something for somebody that they can't even do themselves but like I said I'm not just talking about that situation I'm talking about in general sometimes we have too much going on with ourselves that we can't sit that we can't sit down and realize maybe I shouldn't be messing with this person. Maybe I shouldn't be involved with this person until I get myself together. I got other issues going on and I ain't got no time to be healing nobody. I don't like I have issues within myself. And once again, some people have to learn the hard way and things like this sometimes happen, you know, we're human living the human experience where we do dumb stuff and but I think it's time to learn. We need to start going the easy route instead of the hard route because that brings me to my next um, point that hurt people hurt people. Like I'm, when I was watching um, Will and Jada's Red Table Talk and they were being like really nonchalant about it. Like they were kind of laughing and giggling and you can just notice like the tone that's different but you can notice the difference between Jada and Will's Red Table Talk in August when he did his interview he was it was more like a somber mood um it was more of like a um, more like just to you can feel how heartbroken he was and in there in her Red Table Talk he was more so like you know she was more so like I mean it is what it is it happened and that can really hurt that can hurt somebody Something else that I kind of wanted to touch on was healing before getting into a relationship. I see, you know, a lot of people say, well, you don't have to be completely 100% whole um, to get in a relationship, which I, you know, partially agree with because nobody's perfect and nobody's ever going to be like 100% perfect to get into a relationship. But another thing that I put in my note is that you know childhood trauma and parental trauma and how you learn how to have a relationship and how you communicate it's gonna really come out once you start dating like once you start having different type of um issues and you know com you have trust issues and co commitment issues because of how you watch your parents communicate or the lack of how you watch your parents communicate and like I mentioned earlier, I watch a lot of, you know, August Alcina interviews because I'm, you know, I'm just really inspired by his story and the things that he has to say. And plus he's from New Orleans. So, you know, that's another plus. Um, and I noticed that, you know, his dad passed when he was young 
and him and his mom have always had a rocky relationship and um something that i saw somebody point out in the comments of one of the interviews or whatever that i was watching they were saying um about like how august may have cling to jada because she's 21 years older than him he was 21 at the time she was like 42 at the time that they had their relationship and you know he was young he was impressionable um they were taking care of him I, i've noticed like in relationships that's why i really think that a father's role in a daughter uh, in a daughter's life is huge like it it's huge um because you tend to date either you tend to date the man that your father was or you tend to date men that make you feel that make up for that lack of your father so you know the first man that gives you attention and showers you with gifts and money and stuff like that you tend to you know cling on to that man or you may have seen your father like have a certain communication style or you know certain love languages and you may cling to a man that pretty much mirrors your father and i personally think it's the same for sons people never people always emphasize the role of a father in a daughter's life but people never emphasize the um role of a mother in a son's life as well i and i've seen it i've seen it multiple times in my own life where um you know a son and a mother may not have the best relationship and he kind of takes it out in his dating life like some men just straight up don't know how to treat women because of you know how they watch their mom date and you know in this case jada might may have been like a motherly love to him and um he may have since he, i don't know if you know that may be the reason for his attraction in older women i'm not sure you know what type of women he like but i thought that was um you know a huge thing like just taking advantage of broken people like she straight up said in her interview all their relationship was is that i wanted to feel good once again jada is not the only person that does this a lot of people use other people just to feel good like they don't really care about how the other person may end up broken it's sad that um people can't just leave people alone until they're actually ready to commit to somebody wholeheartedly and i'm not saying that jada didn't care about august at all i'm not saying that but at the same time it's like how much did you care about him if you knew that's what you is that that's what you wanted and then once again just the the whole atmosphere of their red table talk um they were kind of like okay it happened whatever let's move on like they even said in the interview um i don't even know why they why are we talking about this now like i thought we were over it and it and it's never heartbreak take, can take forever to get over some people live the rest of their life trying to get over like a divorce or a heartbreak heartbreak is is psychological heartbreak is spiritual heartbreak is emotional mental like and it can take a toll on you physically that actually brings me to my next point i wrote down never never be quiet because somebody told you to it doesn't matter how long ago your experience was because if you look at childhood childhood i believe that childhood is the most important part in your life because once again you learn how to love you learn what love is you learn how to communicate you, you learn all of these things in childhood and it's crazy like how you can learn things in childhood and carry all the way into adulthood and not change one thing so i just hate that like i, I know a lot of men i talked to my guy friends about this i asked them when it first happened i asked my guy friends about how they felt about this and it was like man august he you know he he's stupid and he uh he weak for talking about it and spilling his business why can't you have the moment to defend yourself and to tell your side of the story my thing is as long as you remain respectful do not you do not need you do not need permission from somebody else to tell your experience it don't matter what happened to you it don't matter how long ago it happened it don't it don't matter what time of the day it happened what time of the year it happened if you want to talk about your experience and if you are and if you feel led by god to talk about your experience you can be helping millions of other people that are going through what you are going through so don't ever feel shy from talking about your experience. This can be related to addiction. Um, this can be related to 
depression or you know anything involving mental health anything involving relationship wise talk about your experiences because healing comes from um you know speaking about the things that may be going on with you mentally if you keep everything inside and that's another reason why i recommend people to not just watch the five minutes of his interview where he talks about jada he talks about so many other different wonderful things in his interview and he also mentions that in the black community you keep a hush on everything and he was talking about like how the things that were going on in his life affected him physically and i don't believe in like we need therapists we need trustworthy friends you don't need people in your life telling you to be to shut up about your experiences you don't need people in your life telling you that what you went through does not matter enough for you to speak about it i don't know why people do that i don't know what this especially with men men are terrible at communicating their feelings because they feel like being vulnerable is gay or it's ugly like that's it's ridiculous i truly encourage men to talk about their experiences because men you know we expect them to be leaders fathers husbands we expect them to be in this leadership role and they can't even communicate effectively because of um you know trauma that's happened in the past to them and you know they don't even want to speak about these things because we set up this culture where i rather you shut up about your 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 um experience because it's making everybody else uncomfortable like nobody won't nobody want to hear about what happened to you when you were a kid nobody want to hear about the fact that you don't know how to communicate effectively and you don't you have commitment issues nobody want to hear about that because that's not cool talking about feelings so i just hate that that there's a culture with that and people were saying oh august should have kept his mouth shut he talked too much he acting like a female um like why the man can't talk about what happened to him this is something that was monumental in his life and y'all telling him to be quiet about it because you it makes you uncomfortable to hear him talk about your favorite actress and what and what she did and how she made him feel like so i also want to talk about just gaslighting and relationships how people will make you feel crazy it's like okay you know am i really tripping or do they really do this to me like them taking what you took as offense lightly like people not really caring about like what you're going through and um you know like i said what i noticed about their whole tone and the red table talk is they were kind of like mm, you know it is what it is it happened and you know now we're moving forward type thing and i just think it's ridiculous how people can't recognize when they hurt somebody like People will make you feel bad for feeling bad about what they did to you. People will literally act, people will literally trip about the fact that you're tripping about how they hurt you. And they'll try to make it seem like, oh, it wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. You know, you, you, you imagine stuff. Like, I've literally had people gaslight me. Like, you hurt me, but I'm in the wrong for feeling some type of way about what you did to me. And people will just not people will not take accountability for how they hurt you and i think that's the importance of recognizing that closure is not necessary close you do not need closure to heal from a, a past relationship I, um but yeah it's just it's all about i think the next step is you know healing one of these nights i was kind of like half sleep half awake and you know something just came to my mind and i wrote it down and i wrote down Healing from God does not require for somebody else to become broken. Now, people may be offended by your healing and people may be offended by you cutting them off or people may feel like um, may, people may be hurt from like you moving on from them. But God is never going to require for somebody else to be broken just for you to heal. It brings me to my other point. Um, about just defining what love is because once you know what love really is and not the society's um, you know society's definition of love once you learn what God's love is like agape love unconditional love once you really learn how somebody's supposed to treat you when they say I love you and I care for you 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 will live to that to a T and the moment that they mess up you like bye I don't like you this is not love you're not finna sit here and tell me you love me and you treat me like this 
Once you learn that, oh, you you become on. Actually, it's I didn't plan this. I really didn't plan this. I bought this sweatshirt like a year or so ago, and I love it because it says God is love. And then on the sleeve it has First Corinthians thirteen four through seven. And there you go. That's the definition of love. And once again, if you are a Christian, you should you should live by that simply because you won't put up with a whole bunch of like like you know BS, and you won't put up with a whole bunch of abuse and you know just mental verbal exhaustion from somebody treating you like crap. Like that's just you will know what love is, and you will recognize it. And um, you know like. I always, you always hear the saying that uh, love will make you do crazy things. No, it won't. No, it won't. That's not, that's not what the Bible says about what love is and what love makes you, makes you do. Like, love is patient. Love is kind. Like, you know, love is not selfish. Like, stuff like that. That's what you live by and you, you're going to be all right. But that actually brings me to my next point. Um, you know, praying before you get into these relationships, because I tell my friends this all the time, and I I stand by it. I, you know, I mean it when I say it. When you ask God about somebody, God may make you wait about everything else. <laughs> At least for my personal experiences, God may make you wait for you know, car, your dream car, your dream career, like you know everything else but if you ask God to reveal who somebody is to you he's not gonna make you wait he gonna show you who that person is as soon as possible like every time I prayed about okay God you know is this friend a good friend God is you know is this this is my husband God literally was like yeah I don't know about that sis but <laughs> No, but on a serious note, pray before you get into these relationships. And if God tells you no, run for the hills. Please, I'm, I beg of everybody that is under the sound of my voice, please pray before you get into these relationships. Because um, I think I heard um, Pastor Mike say this. It's God, um, God would pretty much rather prevent you needing healing um versus having to heal you which means that god would rather you you know consult him on a move or on a person before you actually get into that relationship or you move to that state or you take that job and it damages you and he gotta heal you from that so you know and to save yourself time and heartbreak and disappointment and to save god some time just don't do it like just don't don't do it like we never really talk about that just don't do it like you don't have to do it sometimes we feel like we have to test the waters and you know take on a challenge you don't have to like you you just you truly do not have to test the waters with every single person you think is fine every single person that you think you know may want good for you when they really don't um you don't you just don't have to sometimes you have to say no sometimes you have to tell your heart no sometimes you have to tell your body no sometimes you have to tell your own mind no because sometimes you will get confused and that's when your spirit comes in your spirit man is perfect but your flesh is what is weak and you know it craves things that it shouldn't so um yeah let's just let's just start telling ourselves no let's just start having self-control so for my last point i want to talk about um i'll talk about what an entanglement is i've talked about how you can prevent it and then finally i really just want to talk about you know if you've been in it or if you're trying to get out of it or if you've been in it and you're working on forgiveness make forgiveness be the top thing because I was talking to a friend about this the other day, pretty much saying that how the cycle continues. Like, usually, you know, what happens is that, you know, people aren't, people are just born angry. Something happens to them to where, you know, they act out and they hurt people. Same thing with bullies. Um, you know, they usually get bullied to become the bully. Like, people don't just out of nowhere become bad people. It's learned behavior. 
So I strongly encourage anybody that has ever been in this type of relationship and has broken them down and has hurt them to the core, please don't, because something that humans love to do is that, oh, you know, ain't no, ain't no good people out here, so I'm finna become a player. Like, I'm finna, you know, just, I'm finna just be out here because, you know, ain't nobody out here faithful. Like, no, don't take on that attitude because just like how somebody hurts you, you don't want to end up hurting somebody else because it's not fair to them. Why carry on that toxic behavior? It's just an ongoing circle of toxicity to the point where don't nobody trust each other because everybody is hurt and that's why that's what i was talking about early on in the video talk about your experiences work through them for and forgive people forgiveness is a part of healing regardless if you want to acknowledge it or not forgiveness really it like it, it's in here like it's it's all up in here your body hold on to tension from unforgiveness you feel like you have to move a certain way you feel like you have to you know do certain things because you know the the trauma and the hurt that you have experienced in the past and all of that is you know it's it's in your brain you're keeping track of everything that every that somebody done did you wrong it's in your chest like it's in your stomach like it's it's you all of that for unforgiveness is held up in your body and um you know just move it out throughout life you you got a a whole bunch on your back and a whole bunch on your shoulders to where you can't function right and you can't communicate right and you can't have good relationship good solid relationships because of what somebody did you so please if you are you know breaking free from this type of relationship from you experience this relationship please heal first before you mess with somebody else and mess up somebody else mental and that person get messed up by you and then they mess somebody like i'm telling y'all it's an ongoing cycle of everybody just hurting each other and we get nowhere as a people we get nowhere um in relationship we get nowhere in marriages and then we you know have the audacity to involve kids into it that's a whole nother um topic just involving kids and they grow up and see people that can't communicate and can't forgive and can't love and because you know and they grow up hurt so it's just it's it's never ending and if we become mindful and if we if we just you know become conscious of how we treat each other and how we treat ourselves we ain't got to even wor we ain't got to worry that about a lie i really could keep going but i'm gonna go ahead and stop um, but yeah, I just want everybody to know that God wants, Lord, God wants better for y'all. Like God wants better for us. Okay. He does not want us in these mediocre relationships, these abusive relationships, whether it be mentally, physically, financially, emotionally, sexually, it doesn't matter. Like God wants better for us when it comes to relationship relationship is important. We're human beings. We need a relationship Like we need we have to communicate with each other there's a reason why god put us on this earth but sometimes we feel like we don't need each other you know we don't it's ridiculous like everybody has trust issues everybody has trauma and pains that they're working through but just don't just try not to hurt each other in the process um you know just practicing self-control once again you don't have to test the waters with everybody because you may end up hurting somebody or you may end up hurting yourself find out the type of love that god has for us and that's how we're supposed to love each other and that's how other people are supposed to love you and if somebody that you're trying to be in a relationship with can't love you that way you deuce out please deuce out please let's hold each other accountable um let's listen to each other when we're talking about each other's struggles and experiences and trauma let's not have a double standard when it comes to men versus women it's all wrong because another thing that people were you know trying to defend jada saying oh well men do it okay yeah men do it and it's still wrong <laughs> okay once again men are doing these things that are damaging women and women like well if men doing it i can do it too and then men, women do it to men that ain't never done it to women before and then once again it's that ongoing cycle make sure that you pray about these relationships before you get into them consult god and god will let you know i'm telling you i promise you 
God is going to let you know if it's for you or not. Make sure that you are okay within yourself before you get into a relationship because you don't want to be responsible for somebody else's trauma and somebody in damaging somebody else that didn't deserve what you did to them. Please, let's if we take if we all take life assessments and we all are conscious about what we're doing to other people and how we're treating other people, this world will be a much better place i promise y'all let's stop taking advantage of broken people people do this all the time and i'm actually sick of it i actually want to fight y'all stop taking advantage of people that are in the middle middle of their healing be an assistance to people do not try to use people when you know they're vulnerable and um you know don't try to use people when they're looking to you for help and you actually take advantage of them that's sick and that's twisted and there is definitely karma you reap what you sow whatever you want to call it let's stop doing that and most of all learn how to walk away learn when enough is enough and learn how to forgive because unforgiveness settling settling when unforgiveness settles in your heart and unforgiveness sets in your mind it is not pretty we are the resources but god is the source do not hold anybody else accountable for healing you because you will be let down every single time every single time that you count on a human being to do something like you cannot count on the creation to do what the creator's job is to do so please let's That's all that i have for you guys i really hope that you guys got a different perspective because once again like i said this situation was just treated as celebrity drama but everything is always deeper when you don't just look at things on the surface or you don't just laugh at people for their experiences like i'm always you know trying to dig deeper and um i hope you guys enjoy that on my channel because a lot of y'all was making fun of august and some of y'all have been august so let's not act like um you know he is alone in this situation because we we tend to treat our treat our celebrities like they're not human and they are so yeah that's all i have for this video make sure you leave a comment down below i want to see what you guys' perspective is on the situation you know anything that i didn't touch on make sure that you know you leave it in the comments down below make sure you give this video a huge like make sure you share it so we can you know get this conversation going and also if you have any beth talk subjects um, that you would like me to discuss just put them down in the comments make sure that you subscribe um and yeah i will see you guys in my next video bye